Okay, well here we have a second example of a pedigree. It's not unlike the first one, um, but it's just a little bit more interesting as we'll see at the end of this screencast. We're told that this is a pedigree which shows the inheritance of a rare genetic condition. Um, and we're asked what's the most likely mode of inheritance. And just like before, we're going to take each of the four possible modes of inheritance and use them as a sort of hypothesis um, and try to disprove each one in turn. So let's start with X-linked dominant. If this is an X-linked dominant trait, then a man who has it, he only has one X chromosome, he must have the allele for that dominant trait on his one X chromosome. I've just chosen to use an A. Um, his other X chromosome, or his other sex chromosome rather, is a, is a Y chromosome. His wife, of course, has two X chromosomes, and if she doesn't have this, um, what we're assuming to be a dominant trait, she must be homozygous for the allele for the recessive trait. Now they have three children. Um, this one here is a girl, and she of course has two X chromosomes. She's gonna get a little A from mum, that's fine. But here's where we run into our first problem, is that in order for her to not have this X-link dominant trait, her other allele here must be a little A as well. She must be homozygous just like mum, because if she had a big A, she would have this rare genetic condition, and yet she doesn't. So that's where we've got a problem, because the only X chromosome her dad has to give her has a big A allele on it, um, and yet she clearly doesn't have one, um, or else she'd be shaded in. So it doesn't work, and it can't be an X-link dominant trait. We can cross that off. We've disproven that as a possible mode of inheritance. So let's go to our second hypothesis, that it's an X-link recessive pattern. Now in that case, um, a man, <laughs> you're not going to have two X chromosomes for a start. In that case, a man who has the trait is going to have the allele for the recessive trait on his one X chromosome. His wife, of course, must have the allele for the dominant trait um, on hers. Um, her other X chromosome, we don't know what that is. Well, in fact, we can work it out pretty quickly because they have a daughter here with two X chromosomes. Um, and if she's going to have this rare genetic condition and it's a recessive trait, then she would have to be homozygous, which means that her mum must have a little A to give her so that she could get a little A from mum and a little A from dad. Um, the brother here um, can therefore obviously get a little A from mum, gets a Y chromosome from dad, um, and the sister here, is that possible? Well, yes it is because she can get a big A from, um, from mum and she can get a little a from dad. So that works out just fine. Um, this woman here marries a man who's obviously must have a big A or else he'd have the trait. And they have a girl here with two X chromosomes. Um, she has the trait just like her mum, so, so she must be homozygous. But we've run into a problem here because in order for her to have the trait, she has to be homozygous, which means that one of her little A's obviously came from mum, but the other one must have come from her dad, but her dad doesn't have a little A to give her. So that doesn't work out. And in fact, if you look at the brother, that doesn't work out either because he's only got one X chromosome, which comes from his mum, but she's only got little A's and yet he must have a big A or else he'd be coloured in. So that doesn't work out either. Um, so we can show that it's not an X-linked recessive mode of inheritance. That's two hypotheses down and two to go. Okay, so let's say, let's ask ourselves, could it be an autosomal dominant trait? Now, if it's an autosomal dominant, we don't have to worry. If it's autosomal, that means it's on one of the 22 autosomes and not, an, not a sex chromosome. So we don't have to worry about whether these are males or females. But a man who has the trait, um, his genotype must be big A something. Um, he marries a woman who's little a, little a, of course. That's the only way she could... Um, not have this dominant trait. They have a girl who is big A, well, must be big A, little A, because mum's only got little A's to give. Um, her brother here must also be big A, little A, the same. But the sister, the, the third child here, um, is little A, little A, has to be in order to have the recessive trait, which means that the father here now, we know, must be um, heterozygous, so that way she can get a little A from both parents. Anyone in the pedigree who doesn't have the trait must be homozygous. So this girl marries um, a man who must be little a, little a, little a, little a. These are all marrying into the family. Um, just what we expect, actually. They're homozygous for the normal allele, the allele for the normal trait. This couple here um, obviously can give a big A and 
a little a, so this kid's going to be um, heterozygous, marries someone who's little a, little a, as you'd probably expect, and this is quite possible as, as well. Um, of course, we're sort of seeing the same situation again here, aren't we? A heterozygote and someone who's homozygous recessive, so these are all possible as well. Um, you get a little a from there and a little a from there, or a big A from here and a little a from there. That all works out fine, same deal here. Big A from here and a little a from there, little a and little a. That works out. And this couple here who are both homozygous, of course, can only have children who are also homozygous for the recessive trait. So that works out. We could say um, that this could be an autosomal dominant trait. But before we get too excited and say that it is an autosomal dominant trait, let's make sure, or let's see if we can disprove our last hypothesis that it's an autosomal recessive trait. Now, if that was the case, anyone who has the trait would have to be homozygous for the allele for that recessive trait, and anyone who doesn't must have at least one allele for the dominant trait. Of course, if they have a kid who's little a, little a, which they must be, um, we now know that that's only possible if this woman is heterozygous or if she's a carrier for this rare genetic condition. Um, possible for one must be possible for the other, and of course this kid here can get a big A from, his, from her mum and a little a from dad. Now if if this girl here marries, who we could call 2-2, two, two, really, couldn't we? If 2-2 two, two marries a man whose genotype is big A, little a, it's possible for them to have a kid who's little a, little a. This is, again, a similar pattern to what we saw up here. Marries, uh, she marries a man um, who's big A something, um, and the brother here must be big A, little a, because that's all mum's got to give. Um, this couple here... Um, big A something there, but because they have a child who's little a, little a, we now know that this girl here must be big A, little a, or else this kid couldn't get a little a from both parents. This boy here obviously got a big A from, um, from this parent, but must have got a little a from that parent. Um, over here, this, this guy marrying into the family must have a big A. We don't know what that other allele would be, but we do know it doesn't actually matter. Their kids are both going to have a big A. Um, we don't know what their other alleles are, um, but it really doesn't matter um, because it, it could be big A, big A, big A, little A. It doesn't matter. It's still uh, quite explainable. Going back to here again, um, if we take this couple here, um, it's possible for them to have a child who's little a, little a, as long as this guy here is, um, is heterozygous. Um, they can, of course, also have someone who's big a, little a. So that works out too. So we can go right through the pedigree, and we can put a genotype on everybody and explain them. Um, so we could be tempted to say, gee, it could be an autosomal recessive trait. But here's the thing that I want you to think about. Because we're told that this is a rare genetic condition, and we're asked to say what is the most likely mode of inheritance, can you see here that while it's possible for it to be an autosomal recessive trait, it's pretty unlikely because if it is, the only way we can explain this is if in three generations we have four people, this, this lady here, marrying into the family who's a carrier for the same genetic condition, this man marrying into the family who's a carrier for the same genetic condition, this man marrying into the family who's a, who's a carrier, and this one as well marrying into the family. In three generations, we've got four people marrying into the family who are a carrier for the same genetic condition um, that is running through this family. And that's just really unlikely, isn't it, when you think about it? So while it's possible, we can't say it's certainly not an autosomal recessive trait. Because we're asked what's the most likely mode of inheritance, it's much more likely that it's an autosomal dominant.